Hey guys, Master Zeon here with another Blender time lapse continuing on with Blender Man. This one is part two Hello Dynamic Topology. So the original promo was this one, but this is more of a promo for part three. So we're just going to go ahead and just jump in Blender. And once again, this will be a sped up time lapse at 3x for your entertainment. Alright, so one of the things I noticed upon dealing with end guns is that for some reason if you apply a subdivision, it turns them all into quads. So I'm just, you know, marveling at my mesh because now I can go in and press Control D at a mat cap from the end panel and just begin sculpting now. And the topology of the mesh will gain density as I add details, so it allows me quite a bit of control. So with the planes that I had already indicated, I'm able to um, pretty easily make a face from this. However, the sculpting tools were <clears throat> acting a little buggy. Um, in my recent videos, Blender has been acting a little strange, so it may be time for one of the negative cycles is what I think of it as, um, which is where they make a bunch of improvements to Blender and then comes months and months of, I guess, bug fixing and making it all fit because you know all these new features bound to cause some crashing and lately it hasn't been crashing but I've just been experiencing things that made me wish it crashed so I could just start over so there's a couple of things I don't like here that I'm fixing you know I've got to indi give some indication to the eye socket the ears also sticking incredibly far out the head since the head's going to be primarily mechanized with a removing uh, face mask and the shape of the blender logo um, most of this won't even be visible, but, you know, I want it to, I want to take off his mask and look very nice. So my usually, my usual modeling workflow now is, um, model it, sculpt it, retopo it, and then sculpt it again and then bake my maps. But sometimes I, uh, try a little versatility where I just change the steps up a little bit. Sometimes I could just start from a cube and make the final form and just retopo and just bake from that, which I could do that, but I like practicing topology and I also like, you know, um, making sure my workflow is working. So I get quite a bit of practice with that. So for the forehead, um, in my head, I've broken it down to being that the forehead has the forehead is comprised of three planes um, with a temporal lobe on the side, I believe is what it's called, um, with the indication of the zygomatic, which is the um, bone above the cheek. I'm able to um, use the infraorbital triangle and create a more face-looking face for the character. But first, I got to play with some proportions and pull features out, but like I said, I'm going to try to refrain from using a whole lot of um, anatomy talk to try to just keep it simple and to avoid looking like a fool. But like I said, it is something I'm in the process of studying. So, you know, hopefully someday I come back and we just do a full body from bones to muscles to flesh. Um, but it's still working on it. The features are getting there. So I tried to use box select to modify, it didn't let me. Sometimes the dynamic topology acts a little strange, but it's nothing to worry about. More proportion adjustments. Now lips are a strange thing. Ever since um, Jonathan Williamson posted on Reddit, uh, anatomy study he did of some mouths, I've been working hard on honing it and making sure I understand the shapes. So, you know, on the nose there's, of course, the Cupid's arrow, and what is this other shape called? I'll have to get back to you on that, but, you know, the basic forms of the nose here are being indicated. Um, there's a little dip that happens. So right here, I'm 
just indicating the form of the nose because you know I'm not trying to create a perfect sculpt. I actually intend to go back and do retopology. I know it sounds like I'm kind of bouncing a lot, but narrating to a time lapse video is kind of kind of difficult. But I can do this. More shape adjustments on the nose, so the nose doesn't look very nice right now. But I assure you, it definitely gets fixed up. And then it gets the ultimate makeover when it gets covered by a big old mask. But we'll continue. So going in and just just indicating some forms, playing with the brushes. When it comes to Blender um, and the sculpting, I'm still not quite used to it. I mean, I have my Trim Dynamic and ZBrush and my damn standard, which in here I make by turning the standard brush's curve into a little nipple. And that allows me to get fine lines. The polish brush is one of my favorite brushes for the dynamic topology because it just it just works. It just flattens and gets you very good planar forms, and that's really important whenever it comes to sculpting for me at least. So first I go into my settings and just ensure that my VBOs are on in case my sculpting is slowing down as a result of that. I take a quick break, I guess. And I come back and begin trying to put in the notch of the neck so I can begin indicating the, um, oh man, I'm in a loss of words today. I swear I can mention this stuff normally, but the, um, the collarbone, sorry. So that's just one of the particular plans that I think I indicated in the drawing and I want to be indicated in the, when he's wearing a jacket. So keep in mind that he's going to be wearing clothes on top of this. So the, a lot of the topology of, um, and details for it aren't really important since he's not, you know, undressing for my intended um, purpose of even creating this. But, you know, you want it to be looking like a human. You don't want someone to disassemble your model and find out that you don't know all this essential knowledge. Or you could probably get away with it, you know. When it comes to rendering, it doesn't matter. Your goal is to get your end result to look like your vision or what it's supposed to, right? But as you can see, since the topology of this is being completely devastated and turned to tries by this process, adding an air and implanting it with the geometry that it had didn't really uh, affect it too much in a negative aspect. So that's just my way of dealing with airs nowadays is to deal with them less and less until the day I can um, add it as an object in Blender. So on the left, there's this add-on um, that another user recommended to me. You can see it in the comments of my low-poly bedroom part two video that allows me to use Fast Navigate, which is an option I was missing in the past, as well as enable scene wires, hide scene wires, turn off all subserves, hide all modifiers, expand all modifiers, hide all modifiers, a whole bevy of options that are just essential, and it's just right there. So Thank you uh, once again to the user that pointed that out. Um, I should have uh, found out your name real quick so I could give you proper credit, but you know who you are. Thank you for um, pointing out that add-on. So now we're just putting in the back. And as you see, I just mainly kitbash, I mean, I mainly beat this whole thing to shape using only the smooth, the um, curved tubes, which is, I believe, is, uh, curved strips in Blender, actually, by mistake. Uh, curved strips and polish. And with all of these, you can get pretty darn good results, even without sculpting mastery. Um, so I hope someday I can come and show you all some really impressive things with the sculpting. But for now, you just have to settle for this. A uh, feeble attempt at using it. So I decimated and, you know, change it to 0.3 so I can just, 0.3 is just a magic number for me for decimate in case you haven't noticed. It just keeps the form and just gets rid of 60% of all the triangle, of all the geometry. And now for hello topology and B surfaces, B surfaces I use a little bit in the video. I, I mean, you know, it's useful. You could probably use it to uh, retop a whole model, but 
you know, sometimes I find it's more work just to draw with the pen than it is to just click with the mouse. So, you know, Topo Gun, eat your heart out. I read Topo in this program all the time, and it works like a dream. I think Blender has one of the best retopology systems of all time. And I say that because I've watched a lot of videos of other programs and um, just the workflows and techniques. Once you understand the tools and how to use the shortcuts, you know, short work, all of this short work. So when it comes to topology, I always stick with the same rules when it comes to making faces. Um, usually the loop around the eyeballs, the goggle loop, which is what I call the loop that encompasses both of the eyes as a whole, along with the nasal loop that covers just the nasal area and goes around to the bottom of the mouth. And here's one of the other things that makes B surfaces a little inconveniencing. Like I have a mirror modifier and it's already got my geometry kind of funky, but you know, it's a little quick fixing, but in real life, I'm actually dropping my tablet, picking it up. And, you know, this thing's a big old N2Os and now, unfortunately, I've scratched it up so bad that the pen doesn't move smoothly across the surface. So I get these hangs and clicks whenever I'm drawing now, but you know, I look at like drawing with leg weights on or something. Maybe it'll make me a better artist using damage tools. I mean, you know, when I first started using Blender, I actually had a MacBook Pro that had overheating problems. So whenever I would begin um, drawing power from the CPU heavily, the computer would just shut down. And then if it didn't shut down, the screen would just begin distorting. And I mean distorting like as if you stuck a Nintendo cartridge in upside down and turned your system on. So it was really trippy kind of screens. Like I didn't think Mac had the capacity to show such glitchy screens, but that's what I dealt with for the entire, for the entirety of my first year with using this. But, um, since I've received an investor, uh, things have become a lot easier as far as, um, dealing with 3D and the expenses that come along with it because, you know, I didn't have a gaming computer. I was just, you know, Photoshopping on a Mac when I found out about Blender, trying to study web design. And I found out about 3D objects that you could use um, in web pages. And I started reading about the programs that could do it. And they said Blender was free. And so I decided to, you know, check out Blender. And I've been hooked on this program ever since. Forgot about web design. Forgot what I was even in the first place trying to do. I should probably go back and finish that because, you know, paper vision is probably the future. Except you never hear about it anymore. It's probably about WebGL now or something. Who knows with these web technologies. But, you know, someday I do hope that maybe some of you people that, you know, are brilliant enough to come up with decent ideas as far as where to apply this sort of knowledge, we can come together and make a product that will make us money. Because I'm a modeler, but I'm not the best story writer. I'm also not the best um, game designer or web developer or any of that stuff. And so, you know, mainly the purpose of this YouTube page is to network out and maybe connect with people that are more brilliant than me that just are much better at things that I'm not so good at, you know? But that's enough about my philosophy. Back to the video. So, you know, there's nothing much to narrate here. Draw a line, connect the line, draw a line, connect the line. And as you can see, it's a pretty easy process. You're just, the loops are of course designed to be the most optimal for animation, um, according to pretty much everything I've ever read and studied, I guess, suggests this type of topology for the face. Now for the ear, I actually didn't retopo it in the video because it was actually taking a long time. And I try to time these out at like an hour and, you know, Cramming these down to be in a shorter period of time, I think, works a little better for people's attention span. To be honest, I fall asleep on every Blender video now, unless I barely woke up. But, I mean, I still find it interesting. Pretty much all of the videos I ever watch have something to do with 3D. I mean, the scene's pretty dead right now. You go on Blender Cookie, there's not any videos. You go on Blender Guru, there's nothing new. Like, he did something on hair, you know. We already know about hair. 
but it was still a good video. You know, of course, I like seeing Centel every time, you know, she pops up. So it was a good video, but, you know, I kind of wish that there was a more active blender scene. But, you know, you take it for what it is. It's not sports, you know, there's not a game every weekend or something. But maybe I just spend too much time on 3D. But the way I see it is I am competing with people that are far, far better at this than me. And just to even get my foot in the door, I need something. And so maybe I can someday be the fastest modeler, you know. Or just be someone that is just very, very well-rounded. Because, I mean, I use other software besides Blender as well. So, but no other 3D software, seriously. Like, I want to try out Maya, but the interface is really hideous. It just cannot, I just can't get over their interfaces. Like, I read their instruction manual, and it was like a thousand pages. And all it was about was just the menus within the menus within the menus. So I think I'll stick with Blender till I'm a master, learn all the ideology in a, in a program that isn't so uninteresting to look at, and then go ahead and try migrating to, you know, expand my horizons. Because the cause only use Blender is a, it's crazy. It's crazy to only use this one program. It's a great program, but if you see what the competitors are adding in their stuff, it is very impressive as well. I was watching a video earlier about how Maya is getting a new retopology system in this latest version, and it definitely puts the current systems that we're that you're looking at me use right here to shame. But you know, it's not really the tools; it's the modeler. You know, if you're good, you'll be fast wherever you go. Maybe once you understand your tools, you'll be fast. You know, I think I spent pretty much the entirety of my whole 3D two-year, you know, stint, just becoming acquainted just with the controls and the buttons and just knowing that for this situation to do this and to mechanize it and make it something that is second thought, you know, like instantly I am coming up with solutions the second that a problem arises. Sorry, I'm also um, instant messaging and lost train of thought there. So this video is almost over, but as you can see, the head topology does not look very good. I mean, I closed it up, which is my goal, but um, I actually see right there that I got kind of this uh, hexagonal soccer ball kind of design going, and that's actually not optimal t uh, topology. But, you know, let's continue. So I'm cutting a loop to go around for the... Um, For the um, main plane that goes along the side of the neck that goes down to the collarbone. I was trying to think of the name, but I'm just at a loss of words today. But, you know, I thought I'd talk to you guys for a minute. Well, I watched a retopology version of this for hopefully the last time and get to work on part three. So this is pretty much the head at this point after going through and... Uh, tracing over the decimated mesh so you know I hope that y'all learn something here and at least see that the tools are are functional they're functional enough that you can get in actually just goof off with this and come up with something really cool really fast you know I see videos I mean I, I read posts of people talking about working on the same project for months and weeks you know the speed that you're allowed to be able to put stuff together and concept in this program is unreal and it's something that I just hope that I demonstrate and utilize for y'all well here in this video so Master Xeon your favorite blender tainer over and out happy blendering